Anatoly Karpov, a few months shy of his 24th birthday, became the world chess champion in 1975. After that, Anatoly played in every tournament in sight, winning the majority of tournaments and successfully defending his title twice against Viktor Korchnoi. The chess world became impatient and hungry for a new face, a rising star, someone to capture the imagination. And such a person came along in the form of Garry Kasparov. His dynamic chess style, his vibrant personality, made him a noteworthy challenger. And on the road to the championship in 1984, to the final match, he defeated Viktor Korchnoi, Vasily Smyslov, and Alexander Belyovsky, three very strong challengers. And he earned the right to play a match with the current defending world champion, Anatoly Karpov. So Anatoly, in 1984, you had to face this rising young talent who had captured the imagination of the uh, chess playing public. How did you feel about your prospects going into the match? Actually, every match which I start, I'm sure and confident in uh, my strengths. And uh, so against Kasparov, I was also quite sure. And uh, the first match showed that I had a big advantage over young and talented star. And of course, Kasparov learned a lot. You opened with e4. Gary played c5, his favorite Sicilian defense. Knight f3. E6. D4. D4. C takes. Knight takes. Knight C6. So I, I must say this uh, this is not uh, very often in the uh, repertoire of Kasparov. That time he played uh, from time to time uh, uh, this Powelson Paul, variation. But usually uh, he plays uh, Scheveningen or neither. So Knight B5. Just trying to, well, threatening to, to gain some check. space. Yes, d6. So he plays d6 to stop the check. c4. Knight f6. Knight 1 to c3. a6. Here, yeah. Knight a3. Bishop e7. Bishop to e2. Castle, castle. B6. And now I guess we can talk a little bit about the uh, opening strategy here for both sides. Like you said, you've played e4 and c4, you've gained some space, you're clamping down on the d5 square, you're clamping down on the b5 square, but Black for his part has a pretty solid position and he's established kind of a third rank hedgehog where it's really not easy to attack this setup. Yes, it's it's uh, very complicated and uh, not easy to play such positions for both both sides. And uh, actually, in my chess practice, I played uh, with white and with black, so I know quite well this type of positions uh, happening from uh, Sicilian defense. Uh, so variation which we had in this game, I played uh, with black against Olofsson. I defended successfully this uh, in 76 and uh, in several other games. And Kasparov, Kasparov knew this, of course, uh, that I played with black, with white. See, so he prepared a new line, which happened in the game. So, you played bishop e3. Queen to b3. Now, this is a little surprising. Normally, you would expect you would just play queen d2, rook d1, rook d1, and then just try to slowly squeeze black. Uh, yes, but uh, the idea of queen b3 is just to, to force black to defend pawn on b6 with knight d7. And then uh, then white has time to put rooks uh, very uh, comfortable on d1 and c1 and have some pressure. Then black would play queen c7, knight c5. This is normal way mm -hmm. to develop. Knight c5, queen c2, bishop f6. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in this game... And then, then white has just uh, pressure, but it's not easy to break. Uh, so queen b3, and then Kasparov uh, found new idea. Of course, this is what this was part of his home preparation. He played knight to a5. Okay, this attacks your queen, 
and unleashes the power of the bishop to double attack your e4 pawn. Now, of course, knight on a5 is uh, not a big deal in the game, but uh, on the other, other hand, uh, white, white has to react, and uh, almost by force, uh, we, we must exchange. Uh, Queen c2 was another possibility, but uh, I didn't like this, actually, and so I took on b6. So now no, no, queen, the, the queen cannot take on b6, because then black just without pawn. Knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. Bishop takes e4. And then queen takes d8. Forcing to recapture with the bishop. That's right. If he takes with the rook, then I guess bishop b6 is yes. pretty, pretty bad news. So he takes with the bishop. With the bishop. And then white has time just to, to take out of the corner this rook, which is very important. Otherwise, after bishop f6, pawn is, uh, pawn is pinned. And so rook d1. Black had uh, different possibilities. Well, so bishop e7, which looks passive. Then probably white plays a knight to b1. Just to move knight to c3, gaining one tempo with the bishop, and then just to put solid structure and pressure over d6 pawn. So this Kasparov didn't like. And probably the other choice uh, would be... Other choice may be even more solid, knight to b7, and it's not easy to, to attack this knight, which will protect pawn on d6, but this is passive. And so Kasparov wanted to play more active, and then he played d5. So what better way to study chess than to sit back, relax, and watch, listen, and learn how the masters think? Discover the thought processes and competitive spirit of a world champion as Anatoly Karpov guides you through his best games and his selected games of Bobby Fischer. Walter Brown shows you how he won the US Championship six times and teaches you how to play the Sicilian. Three-time U.S. champion Lev Albert helps you to understand the Banco Gambit. And Gary always chooses the active alternative, whether it's actually the most uh, most theoretically correct. No, actually this is not choice uh, over the board. This is choice uh, during home preparation. So this was just part of, uh, part of the novelty. D5, F3, Bishop F5. Uh, C takes d5. Now we must say that, uh, no, before, before this exchange, we must say that uh, g4 would be not the most exact move. Of course, you kick out bishop, uh, you kick out of the center of this bishop. Bishop cannot come back to e6. But on the other hand, when you exchange on d5, and then you take with the rook, then uh, two white bishops on e file are not protected, and king f2 is not possible because bishop h4 check. And so that would exploit the weakness. Of yes, the pawn. yeah, that's why you need to keep uh, pawn on g2 just to be ready for this check and to meet this check with g3. And then pawn takes pawn, pawn takes, then rook takes d5. Also important, we, we gain temp with bishop, but of course the problem, bishop can come back to e6. Mm -hmm. Then uh, rook d6. And now his problem here is that he can regain the pawn, but the problem is you're still taking one more. Yes, and this knight, this knight is, uh, so the main idea to bring knight to c4, but c4 is controlled very, very strongly by uh, white pieces. Mm, and so Kasparov took on a2, and so commentators uh, didn't like this this move, and they they recommended they, they recommended Bishop e7 uh, first to improve position of the pieces. Rook takes a6. Rook takes a6, I believe. Yeah. Then uh, Bishop takes a6, and then Rook b8. And also this exploits the... Uh... Yes, this knight also is not big uh, beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, so bishop d4, and then bishop takes a2. And here black, even though he's still a pawn down, but he has much better piece coordination than in the game. Uh, yes, but of course, uh, of course here you, mm, you have only one hope to defend the position successfully and to make draw, but white has uh, nice pieces also. So Kasparov uh, 
Okay. Somehow didn't like this line. Then he he took on a two pawn immediately. White white takes on a six, and then uh, rook b eight. So he doesn't want to exchange. Of course, after now after exchange on a six and bishop f six, white could play b four and taking knight on a5. Uh, so rook b8, and most probably at home they decided that, uh, so white has to defend this pawn with bishop, Same. only way. Bishop d4 or something? Yes, and then uh, then black has uh, has good counterplay with knight b3, then bishop c3, then check, and knight c5. Mm -hmm. Knight comes here, and then if bishop c3, then bishop b6 check. King goes to h1 only move and knight c5 and even 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 black yeah. could be better. Black could be better. No, only only defense bishop before, but then it's easy draw. So most probably at home during preparation they forgot or they didn't see the uh, strong ideas white could have in this position. Uh, bishop c5 gaining tempo. Instead of defending the pawn on b2 and be passive, white starts to be very active. Bishop c5, rook a8 is only move. Okay, that attacks this one. Yes, then bishop b5, another. So that defends this bishop and cuts off the other rook that was attacking your pawn for the moment and gives you time maybe to uh, connect up everyone. Uh, yes, and then uh, now if black would take on uh, b5, you take with the knight? Take with the knight and play bishop bishop here. Then we have different possibilities. The, the most easier probably knight to d6. And then uh, I think black should take that that rook. If they they take rook on f1, then white recapture and the eighth rank is very weak. Mm -hmm. That's why this rook. But then and then, take then here. we just take here yeah, on e8, so black must take on f1, king takes f1, and, you simply and so this is simply, yes, pawn, pawn up and uh, most probably easy win. Okay, so Kasparov played rook e6. Rook e6, and then, uh, then we must continue our active operations, b4. So Kicking out this knight from uh, a5, and of course defend one of the bishop. So now he plays knight back to b7. Knight to b7, then we have... You save your bishop. Move bishop f2, yes. And now finally his bishop emerges from the back rank in the opening, and he starts to try to pressure your, your pawn. Yes. F another opportunity to gain tempus. White plays knight to c2, defending this pawn and attacking bishop on uh, So bishop goes to d5. Well, of course, if bishop to here, he would be walking right into the fork, right? Yes, another tempo. So bishop goes to d5, and then rook d1. So this is already bad news. And now the bishop seems to have nowhere really uh, convenient to go. Yes, bishop uh, b3, this is, uh, this is the first, first reaction, because there is pin. Now it looks like he's ready to take here and take here and uh, survive. Yes, and survive. But white has a uh, has very strong move, rook d1 to d7. And so now if black takes this knight, then rook takes rook, and then after pawn takes, rook takes bishop. And you still managed to survive with this extra pawn, and now he's exposed. Yes, and uh, so position is very unpleasant. So after rook d7, what did he? Uh, rook d7. Try. Then then black, black has to has to find some ideas how to how to escape. Well, in the game, he tried to set a trick here for you. He played rook d8, and then if you take the knight, then he has some danger with rook d1 check. 
and he takes maybe your rook on a6. Which, yeah, which is very unpleasant. And then, white simply play. Well, here, you rook played takes. rook takes rook on e6. Yes. And so now, if bishop takes on e6, then rook takes bishop. And so, then knight e1. So he really had so no choice only here move, but to take this one. Only move rook takes d7. Now, yeah, if you wanted to play simple chess, you could just try to take this one. Yes, I'm and, trying to win. And then he takes this, and then you move your knight somewhere. And yeah. So, but so after this, mm -hmm. bishop must take. Otherwise, if pawn and knight d4 are taking bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but uh, it's not necessary because white has fantastic move, rook e1. So we protected our king on the first rank, and then uh, rook is attacked on d7. The only move rook c7. And so again. Now again, it looks like it's time to move this knight. But again, bishop. Bishop is in action. Bishop b6. And so now, now Kasparov resigned because after rook takes knight, rook takes bishop. The eighth rank is, is uh, without any protection. Knight d6. Is the only move? Only move and then. And uh, and then bishop to c5, and attacking then the knight on d6. Oh, and the only only way to defend rook c1 check, king f2, rook c2 check. Oh, don't play g3. king g3. <laughs> yeah. King e1, rook check, then king d2, rook d1 check, trying to defend knight. Don't play here, knight takes three check. Still winning, but... But king e2 is much better. And then uh, it's nice when king f8. Well, king f8, then king rook e8. Rook e8. No, no, rook oh. e8 mate. This is even better. Even better. Better use of the pen. <laughs> and yeah. if he plays uh, g6 or h6 just to make a lift? Uh, just play bishop d3, attacking knight, and this, this rook is, uh, this rook is hanging later on. This move. Mm -hmm. And so King is uh, still, still in the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this must have been very satisfying to score the first punch in a long match like this. No, of course it's nice to to it's nice to to take lead in the match. And uh, so this was a game in one side. So White had initiative, and then uh, uh, they succeeded to to win the game from simple.